Alright, so author's argument, uh, when you read the uh, material, academic materials especially, we usually confront with uh, the explanations of the authors. So usually when it comes to uh, debating or providing the information regarding the main ideas, authors will um, provide uh, supporting details, examples uh, to support the main idea. So this is what it's about. Um, in reading materials, authors usually provide support or claim to reason the presented points. So I, as I mentioned earlier, so this is what this is the concept of argument, the author's argument. Yeah. Uh, so an argument must must consist of a premise or premises and a conclusion. So uh, let's take a look at the uh, next slide. Author's argument must consist of two elements. The first one would be a conclusion, and another one would be a premise. So, what is a conclusion? A conclusion is a statement that is supported or proven by the premises. So, uh, this is actually the main point of a message. What is actually the uh, author wants to convey? convey. Uh, another part would be a premise. So, uh, a premise is a statement that carries specific examples, reasons, cases, or other details that support or prove, explain a conclusion. So, a conclusion is a clear statement right, about what is actually the author is trying to convey meanwhile a premise should be the uh, sentences that provide support provide explanation on the conclusion all right so let's take a look at example one yeah so that we will understand the concept of um, premises and co a conclusion okay my son is careless and irresponsible. He leaves his mobile phone everywhere. He has misplaced two phones in the past 11 months. Furthermore, I am still paying for the last phone he lost. Thus, I do think my son should be given another new phone. So here, if you look at the uh, sentences in red, they are actually premises. Why we say that they are premises? Because they support the conclusion. So what is the conclusion in this uh, paragraph? Okay, it is highlighted in green. So the conclusion, actually the claim of the passage, it carries the main idea of the passage. So here in this passage, I do think my, my son should be given another new phone is actually the conclusion. So, all the premises provide support or explanation that are related to the conclusion. They are related. They are somehow providing good support or evidence to the last statement, which is the conclusion. Okay. Let's take a look at example two. Now. Uh, there are two parts of uh, this uh, sentence. Uh, the one, the first one is in red, and the second one will be in green. Okay, but they are merged into a sentence. I do not think my son should be given another new phone, because I am the father, and I say so. So, why exactly this sentence is not an argument? Okay. Now, let's take a look at the uh, red phrase, red colored phrase. I do not think my son should be given a new, another new phone. So, this is actually a conclusion and it carries the main idea of the sentence. The one that is highlighted in green okay is actually a premise they are, i mean there are two two ideas here so they are premises 
because I am the father and I say so. These two uh, phrase, phrases are not considered as premises because they do not provide any explanation to the conclusion. They do not have clear uh, information on explaining the reason why the son does not deserve a new phone. So that makes this sentence as not an argument. All right, so done with understanding the concept of an argument. Okay, so let's um, briefly recap on what we have discussed previously. So we discussed that uh, an argument is actually um, what the authors say or mention as to uh, support or um, provide in a, a paragraph or a passage. So they are or they should consist of two elements. The first one would be the conclusion and the second one would be the premise or premises. Now, let's took, uh, take a look into the basics of uh, basic types of reasoning. Right? So there are two types. The first one is inductive reasoning and the second one would be deductive reasoning. When um, an author writes the passage, okay, a text, they will, he or she will consider how to develop the ideas. They can choose to use inductive or deductive reasoning. Yeah. So in an argument. If it's in inductive reasoning, so it starts with a specific information or details, a specific information, observations, reasons or facts. They, and later on, it grows to be logical uh, generalization. So here, the premises are more uh, specific and the conclusion becomes more general. The premises focus on establishing or increasing the possibility of its conclusion. So as reading towards the conclusion, the readers will learn on the probability uh, of um, understanding or um, supporting, agreeing to the uh, conclusion. So that is why a conclusion in inductive reasoning will provide either strong or weak argument. It depends on uh, the um, premises the specific information or details provided by the author. So this is actually how it looks yeah, uh, from specific to vague. So um, the um, uh, author will start off by having specific information and make it uh, and generalize it to a more um, a holistic uh, statement. So how it goes, how the process goes, uh, it starts off by observation and usually the author will develop a pattern and it leads towards hypothesis, making a guess uh, assumption and only then the theory is developed so from specific to yeah to more uh, general
what we have to understand about an inductive argument. Okay, so when we have an inductive argument, this argument, the one, uh, the one that is provided by the author, usually started with like what we explained previously, from specific information, something that is very um, clear, that it is specific, focusing on um, the examples, you know, regarding the topic, and as it goes further into towards the end of the uh, paragraph or the passage, um, we will understand that uh, the more general uh, the author's uh, write uh, the uh, argument, so these premises they act as the uh, sentences to provide support to the conclusion. So if the writers provide true information okay true information the information that uh, are, are correct okay so the more likely uh, the uh, conclusion to be true as well so it's not um, it will lead I mean somehow the the uh, premises will have or will lead the explanation the conclusion to correct information as well. So the probability would be high for the conclusion to be true. Okay, let's take a look at the example here. Premise, let's say we have a premise. Socrates was Greek. So this sentence is very specific. Specific in what way? Specific that uh, we know that Socrates is a name and was Greek is like what is actually he is. So premise, most Greeks eat fish. Okay. Uh, so we know that okay uh, so here we have uh, the information is about specific it um, uh, fish and the conclusion that we can come up here would be Socrates eat fish because we are making a generalization that Socrates also uh, eat fish because he was a Greek right okay so even both premises are true it is still possible for the conclusion to be false it's the probability is high however it is possible uh, for the conclusion to be false as well okay maybe uh, in a certain situation maybe further explanation can be uh, Socrates is allergic to fish so he's not necessarily uh, lacking um, fish uh, like the other Greek uh, the other Greeks the, do right so words which tend to mark an argument as inductive uh, include probability likely possibly and reasonably so these are the words that could possibly uh, explain the argumentative on the inductive type okay an inductive argument usually starts by uh, having uh, specific observations, explanations, reasons um, at the beginning. Yeah? So as it's, it moves along towards the end, towards the conclusion, uh, we will notice that the author provides uh, more general information as the conclusion. Um, so this um, specific uh, fact or uh, reasons will somehow increase um, the argument uh, to be uh, more logical okay so that is why it is said that the conclusion can uh, probably be true okay um, however um, this is just a possibility it's not necessarily to be true all the time So this is an example. January has been cold here in Siberia. Today is January 14. So it is going to be another cold day in Siberia. So the second statement here is having the possibility of being or carrying uh, a true information which is related to the uh, first sentence, which is the premise. What about deductive reasoning? 
So when it comes to deductive reasoning, an author usually starts the development of a passage or paragraph or text by having a general statement or rules. Uh, usually they are uh, uh, they comes in a conclusion or a claim and supported by the premises which are the more specific information. So general statement or general uh, information or rule and supported by specific information. So deductive reasoning focuses more on the conclusion. So the truth comes from the premises. The conclusion is rather valid or invalid. So the truth or um, false statements. All right, so from vague to specific. So this is actually the flow of the ideas. So the ideas or statements are from vague or general to a more specific information. Usually when it comes to deductive reasoning, the author will start off by having a th theory or theories. So from this theories, um, hypotheses were made or are made. Only then observation comes along the way so that a confirmation can be made. A deductive argument is one in which it is impossible for the premises to be true but the conclusion false. So what we can see here is that if the premises are acceptable or the truth, so the conclusion must be accepted, must be able to be accepted and the conclusion should carry uh, true information too. So this um, type of argument is supposed to be definitive proof. Definitive means at the end, it is certain that the information is true Okay, for the claim. Okay, let's take a look at the example. So premise one, all men are mortal. So premise, another premise would be Socrates was a man. So the conclusion that comes from the premises, Socrates was mortal. So that's why I say that if the premises are true, provide the true information. So usually the conclusion that comes from the um, premises, the conclusion that comes from the premises are, uh, is the truth. So if you have a deductive argument and you accept the truth of the premises, then you must also accept the truth of the conclusion. So that is why it is, if you have a deductive, if an author has a deductive uh, argument, usually uh, the conclusion would be strong because th the information provided by the premises are the truth so that is why the conclusion would be very solid and can be accepted or valid. So this is how to describe um, a deductive argument. So if you have a true premise and an supported by another true premise, 
so the true conclusion it is definite that you're going to get the true conclusion so that what makes it different as compared to inductive argument so just now we discussed that inductive argument true premise having a true premise plus true premise but only having the probability of be having a, a true conclusion so when it comes to deductive it is valid true I have two examples here to uh, explain further on deductive reasoning. Okay, let's take a look at the first uh, example. Alright, so as we uh, discussed earlier, when it comes to deductive reasoning, the first uh, premise uh, presents um, general information. Okay, so at ease. Uh, as the um, reasoning is developed, argument is developed, we will uh, notice that the author will get the uh, argument more specific uh, until the conclusion. Okay, so all students eat pizza. So this is the premise and this is the major premise, considered as the major premise. Um, this one uh, premise shows or indicates that it is actually a generalization of the the topic or the situation so all students eat pizza so this is a general statement so claire is a student at asu so minor premise it provides the support okay it provides more information regarding the major premise okay so what conclusion that we can come uh, from these uh, two premises, therefore, Claire eats pizza. So, this is somehow related uh, to the information given in the premises. So, the conclusion is specific now uh, to Clara. All athletes work out in the gym. So, this is the major and it is a, a general statement because all it is considered, I mean, the situation the sentence is generalized uh, in, uh, from the topic, right? So Barry Bonds in a, is an athlete. So one sentence provide an explanation uh, for uh, the major, okay? Uh, some uh, an, another support for the major major premise, and therefore Barry Bonds works out in the gym. So here, what the conclusion that we can say is that since Barry Bonds is an athlete okay so before this we have the idea that athletes work out in the gym and Barry born is an athlete so Barry works out in the gym so that's the conclusion that we can get uh, from the uh, two premises presented so uh, general it starts off with general and it gets specific when it comes to the conclusion let's take a look at the example so that we can understand deductive reasoning better. Smith owns only blue pants and brown pants. Smith is wearing a pair of pants today. So Smith is wearing either blue or brown pants today. So that is why we say that a conclusion is definite of truth when it comes to deductive reasoning because the premises provide specific information that can be accepted they are re relevant to the conclusion I really hope that you understand the topic that you learned today so as to recap today we have learned a few things several things one we learned on uh, authors argument two there are two parts of the content when it comes to an argument an argument should consist of a conclusion and a premise or premises 
Number three, we looked into inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. Both reasonings are the way of the authors provide explanation to the reader. So now let's try an exercise to check your understanding on the topic of inductive and deductive reasoning. Let's go!